Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to generate an Illuvision profile like this using ArcGIS Pro. So it goes without saying that uh, if you want to generate an Illuvision profile for some reason, it's essential that you first get hold of some uh, Illuvision data. And one of the easiest ways of downloading some Illuvision data pretty much for anywhere on Earth is by heading over to Earth Explorer web portal and you can download some SRTM digital elevation data for a specified region of your choice. And I have already done a couple of such tutorials showing you guys the exact process of downloading some SRTM elevation data. And I will put them down in the description below for your reference so you can visit some of those tutorials beforehand and get some elevation data downloaded for yourself. But at the same time, I'll be providing a link to download the data that I'll be using for this tutorial as well. So either way, whatever works for you, you could just go ahead and download the same exact data that I'm going to work with today to follow along this tutorial and see whether you can reproduce the same results or not. All right, so as you can see over here, I have already imported some elevation data onto my ArcGIS Pro workspace. And as I told you guys, you'll be able to download this same exact data set as well from the link given below in the description. And this is the digital elevation data set that I'm going to use today to create my elevation profile. Now you can see that by default, whenever you just drag and drop elevation data onto your ArcGIS Pro workspace, the color scheme that gets assigned by default is this sort of a black to white uh, gradient where black shows the lower elevations and white is supposed to show the higher elevations. And you can see the scale uh, right over here. But just for visualization purposes, I'm just going to click right over here and maybe assign a bit of a different color scheme where we would be able to see a bit more vibrance going on. For example, something like this. And uh, from here, if you again come back to this scale and see what values correspond to low elevations and which values correspond to high elevations, you can see that these brown areas basically correspond to low elevations and these uh, blue areas correspond to high elevations. All right, now coming back to the task at hand, generating an elevation profile. So to generate an elevation profile, uh, even though we have a digital elevation raster doctor right over here as a layer by itself, we need to tell ArcGIS to use it uh, as a part of the 3D analysis that we're going to perform. And the way to do that would be by heading over to add data and we can go to elevation source layer and from here we get the option to tell ArcGIS Pro to use a very specific layer just for the purposes of extracting elevation values and and in my case as you can see right over here it's this elevation data bg.tiff layer so I'm going to select the same layer right over here and say OK and when I do that uh, you would see that a new section called Elevation Surfaces would open up right around here and you'll be able to see this Elevation Data bg.tiff getting added under these Elevation Surfaces. Now this doesn't really show up in any which way, even if you deactivate, you can see that nothing actually happens in the actual uh, workspace, but it's there under Elevation Surfaces. So next what you can do is you can head over to Analysis and Right around here, you can see Exploratory 3D Analysis. You can click on this drop down menu and you can select Elevation Profile. Now, when you do that, you would be able to see a couple of uh, different options. And uh, I'm assuming in this particular example, your preferred uh, unit for measuring distances would be meters, but you always have the option to go ahead and maybe change stuff. Let's see if you prefer to have your units in kilometers or feet or miles or yard, you can make the selections accordingly. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to retain that to be in meters. And uh, we can just click on this first part, interactive placement. And what this lets you do is, you can uh, start drawing on top of this elevation raster and it's going to create a profile based on those values. So I'm just going to create a random sort of a section Let's say I'm going to start from a very high elevation like this. And just based on the color, you can see that I'm going to drop to a relatively lower elevation range right around this, this point. And I would be going a bit higher again. And I would be dropping all the way down to 
this sort of a very low elevation. And as soon as you double click, you would be able to see right around here, this kind of a chart appears where the Y axis shows you the elevation and the X axis shows you the distance. So in this case, the zero distance would correspond to my starting point, which is right around here. And uh, as I'm moving my mouse cursor along this graph, you can see that along the cross section line, a point slides as well, which corresponds to the correct uh, distance from the starting point. For example, at this point, I'm actually at uh, 10,000 meters or 10 kilometers, which is uh, right around here. And as you can see, when I move my mouse pointer to the right side, I'm actually climbing back up uh, to a higher altitude, which is about 695 meters. And uh, I'm dropping down as I actually move towards the right side. Well, it might be a bit confusing when you, when you look at it this way, because you can see that my starting point is around here and my ending point is around here. And I would like to have my elevation profile basically correspond to same sort of an alignment for just uh, viewing purposes. You can basically flip this graph entirely by clicking on this button, reverse direction. And when you do that, now you'd be able to see that your starting point is right around here, about 532 meters. And as you slide your mouse towards the left side, you can see that that point slides across the cross section line as well. And slowly we are moving towards low elevations just like this. So that's actually a pretty handy tool and, and you can always make adjustments to the, to the dimensions of this chart as well. For example, let's see if you want to fit the entire thing into two separate sections of your available screen real estate like this. And now you can see that the elevation variations are quite apparent and it's uh, really interactive as well. When it comes to the properties of this chart, uh, if you head over to properties over here, you'd be able to make uh, changes accordingly as well. Now, if you don't really prefer to have this, this sort of a purple color, you could go and make changes like this. Let's say if you prefer something like a yellow color. And uh, as you can see, when you move to the left and right sides, there's a highlight that follows your cursor. So you can change the color of that highlight as well. For example, let's say if I want to have more, more sort of a greenish highlight, just like this, I could actually uh, make changes like that as well. And down here, you'd be able to see some statistics about this elevation profile as well. For example, you can see that, that the minimum elevation of this entire chart is 7.98. And the maximum, uh, which is supposed to be, I think this peak is about 818.8. And we have the gain and loss as well. So all of these are actually quite handy information to have about the elevation profile that we have uh, right over here. Another cool feature is that uh, you would be able to export this information either into a, into a static image, which is I think quite self-explanatory, or you could uh, export this into a feature where this line that you drew can be exported as a line feature, or you could uh, export this as a geodatabase table, or you could actually export this as a CSV table which will have two columns, one corresponding to this distance, which is the x-axis, and the other corresponding to the elevation, which is the y-axis. So if you were to open that up, maybe using another spreadsheet processing software like Microsoft Excel, you would be able to draw your own graphs just like this in a completely different software. So all of that uh, is actually possible. And uh, just before we wrap up this tutorial, I think I'm going to do a quick test uh, on how this CSV table function works. But before we go over to that, I would also like to revisit uh, the second option under this create tab, which is getting the profile along a line. So you can see that before we were working on this interactive placement option. And now if you go to this option, which is along a line, which means now it's going to let us select a line layer from an external file that we might have. So let's go ahead and give it a try as well. So I'm just going to close this and let's head over to view and I'm going to open the catalog pane. And from here, you can see that I have another shape file called reverse. So I'm just going to go ahead and import that. So this is basically just a hypothetical construction of a river line. So you can see sort of the main river line right around here and just assume that these are some tributaries uh, contributing to this main river line. 
And uh, let's say that I'm interested in getting the profile of this main river line. So you don't really have to trace along this main river line, even though that would actually be a perfectly valid method of getting that. But since we have gotten the line down with the highest accuracy that it could have, we don't really need to bother about drawing on top of that again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back again to analysis and 3D and uh, exploratory 3D analysis, elevation profile. And this time I'm going to select along a line and uh, you can see that the only polyline layer has been selected. However, this apply button has been grayed out because it's able to generate a profile for a line at a time. And you can see that this actually has a bunch of different lines. So what I could do is I could open up the attribute table and select the appropriate line for which I would like to obtain this profile. And as you can see, I could just jump from one line to another in terms of how it gets selected. So I'm just going to select uh, my line of interest, which is this main river line. And once it's selected, you can see that the apply button again uh, gets activated. And when I click on apply, now you will be able to see it actually generated the elevation profile for us for this main river line. And uh, since the river is flowing from this sort of eastern side to the western side, I would like to have my elevation profile also flipped to follow along accordingly. So I'm just going to reverse this so that when I put my mouse pointer over here, it will actually correspond to this beginning part of the river. And you can see that that actually has the highest uh, elevation, which is 619. And as you can see, it basically falls down. However, there seems to be a bit of a high elevation area right around here. Well, just keep in mind that this is basically a hypothetical construction of a river line, not really an actual river line. So in an actual river line, you will be able to see a very nice gradient changing from a high elevation to low elevation. So just before we wrap up, uh, as I told you guys, I would like to maybe for some purpose export the X corresponding XY values into a separate uh, Excel spreadsheet or something like that. So what I can do is I can click on this button and select CSV table, head over to your working folder. I'm just going to name this as test, click save. And now if you head back uh, to your working folder, you'll be able to see that CSV file uh, right around here. So let's just open that up uh, using, let's say Excel. And this is how it looks. So you can see we have an ID distance and the elevation. I think we don't really need this ID column so we can just get rid of it. And now you can see that you could use these uh, row values, whatever the purpose that you would like to use them for. All right, guys. So with that, uh, it's going to be a wrap for this tutorial. I hope the things that we discussed was clear for you guys. And if you did like the tutorial, show your support by hitting that like button. And if you do have any questions, don't forget to add a comment down below as well. Thanks a lot for watching again, guys. I'll see you again with another tutorial soon.